Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the channel. Now I'm with Volkswagen again today, but this time we're looking at the new Volkswagen Passat. Now I did have the awesome opportunity of checking out this new model and it was kind of late last year, but this time I've got a lot more time with the car. I'll be able to take it out on the road most importantly and check out all this new and improved interior space. Now, just before we check out the exterior of this awesome chili red metallic, which I quite like actually, it kind of pops in the sunlight, just wanted to touch on the price. So they start from about 38 and a half thousand and they go up to around about 43 and a half, just depends on specs and configurations. And of course the trim levels as well. So these depict kind of the specification, the kind of the trim level, but notice as well the wheels. These are 17 inch wheels. So this is kind of like what they start at, but they can go up to 19 inches if you wanted to kind of change change the wheel design just a little bit more. And there's a few of them you can see here. Now, as with most manufacturers, when they bring out a new model, they're optimizing for efficiency and aerodynamics, but also keeping those stylish looks. And I think Volkswagen have got it quite right here because when you kind of look at the front, it almost has like these kind of golf attributes. Now golf is of course, Volkswagen's most popular and most iconic icon. I know they, that word is used a lot in certainly the Volkswagen uh, world, but yeah, I think they've got it just right. It's kind of got those angling looks to the front here, nice little light bar all surrounding on the front here and big grill on the front there to keep that aerodynamics as slippery as possible, meaning the drag coefficient factor is about 0.25. And I think before it was about 0.3. And this is what I mean with drag coefficient factors. The lower that number, the more it cuts through the air, and it which means greater range in terms of your fuel. Now, when it comes to dimensions of the new Passat, the length is 4,917 millimeters, width 1849 without the mirrors, and height 1497. So I should add it's about 144 millimeters longer than the previous model. Now I should add the rear design of a lot of Volkswagens at the moment is really, really cool. So they've kind of got this like 3D look in the tail lamp. And even when you unlock it, it does a really, really cool animation. Of course, you've got the indicators that do their usual kind of swooping motion. But yeah, this 3D look in here, just really, really stylish. And I think suits the car down to the ground. Now there's a reason why Volkswagen Passat sell so well, and that is mainly because of their luggage and storage capabilities. I mean, look at the size of this boot. I had all my filming bags in here just a minute ago and just took them out and put them on the floor over there. But they kind of form this like squared off area, kind of comes up to about here. But I can fit another couple of bags behind that, which you can't often do in some cars. So it goes back so far. Now the boot capacity you see right here right now is 690 litres. But of course, if you fall down the seats, then it'll go up to around about 1,920 litres. So that's 40 litres more compared to the previous version, as you see right here. And if you fold the seats down, that's about 100 140 litres more. So basically the car is ever so slightly longer as we saw in the dimensions. So you've got a bit more space in the back for storage and there's also more legroom, which we'll check out in a second as well. But uh, yeah, loads of space and there is even space under here as well for more storage too. Of course, if you go for the plug-in hybrid version, it'll be slightly less, but I have been told there is a tiny bit of underfloor storage space just in case. Right, let's have a look at the rear seats. Right then guys, well you can tell, I mean, look at the leg room in here. This is, this is really good. I mean, that's set up for my driving position. I'm six foot two, long legs, and yeah, I can get my whole hand behind uh, my knee there to the driving seat. So that's really good. And I just will add the level of premium materials ever is really, really nice. Everything's all soft and squidgy. The seats are super luxurious, in fact, this is the kind of car you want to do a long journey in sitting in the back here because it's just so nice. In fact, oh yes, there's even blinds here as well, which um, hook in there like that, if I've done that right. <laughs> Look at that. Now you don't get blinds in the back of a car that often. So that is pretty cool, all built in. So yeah, there's two USB-C ports here. There's climate control here as well. There's even heated seats in the rear as well. Now that's pretty cool, so that's uh, something you don't see every day. So yeah, all around, headroom's good as well. I will add that due to, let me put that up there, probably a bit, more, a bit more comfortable. Oh yeah, that's much better. So yeah, just, there's so much room in the back here, I can't believe it. I think the Volkswagen was saying that, yeah, the car's a bit longer and all that kind of length has gone to the rear seats and the boot. You really, really do notice it. It's really good. I'm not sure what these are for though, because I think I remember seeing someone put their like phone in here before, but I'm not sure I would put my, oh, I guess you could put your phone in. It does actually surprisingly take your phone all the way in there, but yeah, 
that's that. Uh, cup holders, let's have a look, see, yep, cup holders in there. And of course that's the ski hatch going through to the back. So yeah, that is really impressive. Really, really good. Well guys, what I normally find in cars is that the premium materials can of course usually be up the front, but then when it gets towards the back, usually you find more evidence of plastics and things, which again, isn't a deal breaker because normally I don't sit in the back and normally it's just the old passenger or two. I will add that that premium feeling is even more so up the front here as well. And it was evident in the back as well. So it's really good, even on the side of here, look, they could have just put plastic here or something, but it's it's got this kind of squidgy feel to it, even up here. So Bill Corti's really good. Like really, really good. Literally, I, I can't find a non-squidgy surface apart from maybe on the bottom of the door, which, but that was the same as the back, but everything else is just really, really good. So a little tour around the front then, shall we? So I think we should start with storage first. So door bins, nice and big. Then of course, we've got a little bit of storage in here with a little tray, probably for coins and things. Uh, then down here, we have two cup holders, two USB-C ports down in there and the adapter that's included from the looks of it. Start, stop buttons, turn the engine on and off is literally right here. Handbrake release, but um, I think with most Volkswagens it comes off automatically. Hazards there, of course this big multimedia screen here, more on that in a second. And uh, then the steering wheel, which has buttons. None of this touch stuff, they are physical buttons, ones you can actually press. So that's really good, I can literally turn the volume down and up and next track, previous track, all from the steering wheel. So that is really, really good. Now I know from Passat's a long time ago, they used to have the gear stick down here, but now it is up here following the rest of Volkswagen's range. Spins around for drive, reverse and park all up there, along with wipers and indicators in the usual place. In fact, I've just spotted one thing literally up here. There's a USB-C port. Why does no other car manufacturer do this? In fact, I'm gonna kick myself here. I've reviewed a few Volkswagens, but I've not spotted that before, which I'm presuming is for a dash cam. Bravo Volkswagen, that's really good, because that saves you having to buy a five meter long cable and trail it around everywhere, potentially going over airbags or wiring it into the fuse box. There's just a USB-C port there. I hope that's what it's for. But yeah, there's literally one here. I wonder if there's one that side as well. No, just the driver's side. So yeah, Volkswagen, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. So yes, this multimedia system. So Volkswagen, of course, over the past few years have had some feedback about their multimedia systems that has not been the best. However, they have listened and they have certainly implemented many, many features and the user experience of using their software now in the cars is amazing. It's definitely one of the most customizable I've ever seen in the car, which is pretty good. You don't have to customize it if you don't want to, but what I'm talking like these icons up here, you can change and maneuver and add tiles to the home screen and basically you make it your own. Now, of course you can just leave it as it is and enjoy it all with the default settings, but there is that level of customization just in case you want it. So in terms of the screen itself, We've got the sat nav over here on the left and no it's not that size if you do want it bigger just tap it and it'll go full screen which is uh, pretty good now this blue button down here is your home button so that'll take you back to this screen here but if you want to see everything that the car can do just tap on the kind of application launcher or the menu button and that'll show you everything there and of course you've got phone radio media navigation and uh, there seems to be another page with various other things on there. A lot of Volkswagens also have the IDA voice assistant. So this is like a voice assistant in the car where you can ask it to do things. There's a really cool thing coming out on the IDA voice assistant soon where you will have chat GPT integration. Now, basically it's an AI chatbot which allows you to ask it a variety of different things. Think Google and Alexa, if they were combined along with Siri and they just produced this amazing voice assistant, that's kind of what it can do. And it'll be connected to the internet and you can pretty much ask it anything. So that sounds pretty cool. Might do a video on that later in the year. I just have to ask Volkswagen for a, uh, a car for me to uh, try that out. So uh, if you're listening, chat GPT, I wanna make a video on it in the, in the Volkswagen. Now, of course, there's a thing on here called App Connect, which is your usual Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So if you're not a fan of using the car manufacturer's multimedia system itself, you can just plumb in your phone and use those apps on there just like that. One final thing is that the instrument cluster is all digital. So yes, you can customize various elements on here. I have the sat nav over here if you wanted. So again, all that kind of customization, just like the multimedia system. Now, the only thing to do now is to take this one for a drive. 
Now guys, just as I maneuver out onto the main road and we'll give this car a little test, see how we get on, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, I've been filming a lot recently, so for those of you who've been subscribed already, you'll know that I upload usually on Friday at four o'clock, but I'm going to be posting potentially a little bit more in the future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'd hate for you to miss out. Right, let's skip to a head when we're on the main road. Right, here we go guys, we'll open this up. Let's see what it's like. Well, first impressions just getting to this road. Very, very smooth, very premium feeling. Just sit back in the seat. Yeah, it just glides across everything. Because I was navigating on the bumpy road, similar to the um, uh, the Tiguan video I did very recently. Um, very similar location to where I've been driving and the roads coming out are really, really bumpy and it just glides across them. But yeah, this. This is a cruiser. You could eat up the motorway miles on this, no problem whatsoever. So I guess one thing to talk about is of course engines. Now I mentioned um, earlier when we were talking about the boot, uh, the plug-in hybrids are coming soon. So they're not out quite yet, but apparently they're gonna go up to about 70 miles if plug-in hybrids are your thing. This is achieved by their 19.7 kilowatt hour battery and it can even charge in around about 20 or so minutes. Oh, we've got a pheasant running across the road. <laughs> they don't understand cars very well. Don't really want to splatter one on video. <laughs> anyway, plug-in hybrid, 19.7 kilowatt hour battery and it can actually fast charge on DC charging in around about 20 or so minutes. I think it equated 23 minutes. Now obviously charging at home is gonna be a few hours, but having said that, the fact you can get like pretty much the average commute, well, more than the average commute on electric, it's essentially just like buying a mini EV and all this space and practicality as well. I mean, look how far it goes back at the back. It's, it's really impressive. Now, if plug-in hybrids aren't your thing, there are a couple of petrol engines. So to clarify, there are no diesel versions of the new Passat. They are only petrol. So they are available in 150 PS and 204 PS. They're both a 1.5 litre engine with mild hybrid technology. Well guys, so I think that concludes this week's video. Well, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and of course, huge shout out to Volkswagen UK for organising this test drive event. It's been very tricky to do without them. But yes, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you then. I'm going to enjoy this drive a bit more.